Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus, and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop, and I'm going all the way to heaven, so come on and join me on the road to freedom. Well, welcome to On the Road to Freedom. We are so thankful that you joined us today. As you can see, we're over here on the magnificent yeah. Caddo Lake. I won't tell you where we're on the Texas side or Louisiana side, <laughs> merely because I'm not sure. We want to talk to you today about the ministry of giving. Giving is one of those things that some people just like to avoid because they don't trust anybody. And obviously, unless you trust God, you won't learn how to trust anybody else. But the ministry of giving is something I've been learning about since I became a Christian, and that was in 1980. And it changed my whole life. Everything changed, including as my relationship with Jesus kept getting better and better, then my relationship with money kept getting uh, less and less dependent on things and more dependent on the Lord. And so we're going to share some scripture with you today that we believe will raise the quality of your life. And that is the will of God. That's why we do these shows. Yeah. Man, we come into your home for one reason, to help you to understand the truth that will make you free. And you know what free people do? I say it all the time. Free people do whatever they want to. And that's the will of God for you, that you are not held down by the world, but that you are the head and not the tail, and that you increase and do not decrease. That's the will of God. I'm going to ask my bride and my best friend, Miss Christie, to share some of this scripture with us in the New Living Translation. I love this. This is 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and the sixth verse. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, baby. <laughs> it yeah. says, uh, in this translation, it's so simple. It makes it so easy to understand. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Now, this is so important because in the Amplified it says, same verse, different version, says, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but he who sows generously will also reap generously. So there's only two ways I know you wanted to expand. Well, I mean, this is what God just said. There's no use for you to beg God to give you more money because he gave you total control. He said, if you give, it'll be given unto you. You can pray and beg him to give unto you, but he told you how to get to receive, but you gotta give to receive. Mm -hmm. I know it doesn't make sense, it's like tithing. It doesn't make sense that you'll do better on 90% than you will on 100. It's not logical, it's not objective, but it is the truth. How does he do that? I don't know, he's God. But I know that from the time that I started putting his kingdom first, sending the tithe into the toilet, the first check I write every month, I don't think about it. I don't look to see if I can pay my rent or the car payment. The first check, the first 10% of every dime that I come in contact with goes into the kingdom of God. God said that 90% will go further. How will that happen? We have to trust God. But ever since I started doing that, I started being more blessed, oh, and yes, you will definitely. too. So you are given control as the bottom line. If you don't give, 
you won't receive. But if you do give, then there's two ways to give, sparingly or and grudgingly right. or generously and cheerfully. Yeah. And man, when you choose to give generously and cheerfully, the more you give, then he said you'll reap more. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants God to trust them with more. But I just want to tell you that God wants you to trust him. Yeah. And if you don't trust him with something like he said, the little things, you know, if, if, if God can't trust you with $50, then why would he trust you with $5 million? You know, he said it's the little things that count to God. And uh, unless we, he can trust us in the little things, he can't trust us in the big ones. Go ahead, That's my right. love. So there are only two ways to give. And you must decide, verse 7 says, in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. So we're to give cheerfully, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And I love this in the Amplified. It says, let each one give as he's made up in his own mind and purposed in his heart. Now, this is so important because we have to purpose to be givers. That means we give on purpose. And Mylon and I, we always discuss these things. We plan to give. We purpose to give. And we ask the Lord, how much would you have us to give? Yeah. And then when we go, we're able to do that cheerfully. So then in verse 7, God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8 says, and then God will generously provide yes. all that you need. You don't have to be concerned about your needs being met once you've sown your seed. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to Amen. share with others. Oh, that's so good. In the Amplified, it says, He will make sure that all grace, every favor, earthly blessing come to you in mm. abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support no and need furnished, help. yes, and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. So that means everywhere you go, you're a blessing. Think you're about this. God yeah. will give a, all grace, every all favor. Grace. Yeah. You need favor with Man, your boss? So good. You're about to get fired on Friday and you go in and get a raise on Monday? What's that about? That's the favor <laughs> of God. Amen. Boss don't even know why all of a sudden he likes you mm -hmm. or she likes you. Earthly blessing. This is not blessing when you get to heaven. A lot of people think the blessings of God are all when you get to heaven. You don't need a raise when you get to where everything's free. Mm -hmm. You need it now, today, on this planet yeah, and on this earth. Amen. You don't need healing in a place where there's no sickness or disease. Everything you need, the Bible teaches you for, is right here on earth. The favor of God in earthly yeah, blessings, yeah, praise so God, good. come to you in abundance, in abundance more than when you're a giver. Amen. Amen. And then verse 9 says, as the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds mm. will be remembered forever. Now, I love this promise because our giving produces eternal reward. Yes, it does. That means forever we're going to receive reward for our giving here on earth. Excellent. Amen. Yes, it does. There's always someone that lacks integrity. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're Christians. And sometimes we see things that later on we know that wasn't right. They shouldn't have done it that way. But remember this, if I give to some preacher and he takes it out and back and burns it in a barrel, that has nothing to do with my reward. Right. God promised me that if I would give in faith, right. he would make sure yeah. that these things happen, yeah. that I have every earthly blessing yeah. abundantly supplied, not just in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And then verse 10 says that for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat in the same way he will provide and increase your resources mm -hmm. and then produce. He will. This is guaranteed. He will. guaranteed. he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Verse 11 says, yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And, you know, I love the way Mylon teaches that, that there is momentum to the blessing. Yes, you know, day in, day out, we look for ways to give, to be a blessing. There comes a point where we just get overtaken. 
<laughs> Amen with the exactly. blessing of the Lord. So that's the level. God wants us to get to the place where we can always be generous. And when we take our gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Here's mm. part of the benefit of being a giver. So two good things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers will be met and they will joyfully express their mm. thanks to God. Amen. Verse 13 says, as a result of your ministry, as a result, they will give glory to God for your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient. Now, this means you're that you're a doer. Yeah. You practice what you preach Come when on. you give, then others see that you are a doer of the word and you are obedient to the good news of Christ. That's so good. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace that God has given you. This is the grace of giving. Hallelujah. So the thank Grace God. and ministry of and giving. Yeah, grace How and ministry awesome of giving. is that? Now in 3 John 5 and verse 8 in the New Living Testament, it says, Dear friend, you're being faithful to God when you care for the traveling teachers who pass through even though they may be strangers to you. Verse 6 says, they have told the church here of your loving friendship. Please continue providing for such teachers or preachers or ministers in a manner that pleases God for they are traveling for the Lord and they accept nothing from people who are not believers. So we ourselves should support them so that we can be their partners as they teach the truth. Yeah. That's what happens when you... Uh, step into the ministry of giving and because you do trust God and because you seek first His kingdom and His righteous way of thinking and acting and believing, then you turn your uh, living for Him into giving for Amen. Him. Amen. And you start supporting those kind of ministries. It yeah, says here, okay. it's pleasing to God and you become their partners. Yeah. And uh, an example of that is when we first married. you want to share that, baby? Sure. Well, you know, when we first married, Mylon and I had to start completely over. And uh, most people don't, don't know that, but we didn't even know if we were going to be able to, to keep our home. We had to start being generous givers. And it is amazing what God did. Was it overnight? No. Mm. The Word of God is line upon line. It's precept upon precept. So day in and day out, we had to ask the Lord, show us where to give, when, how much. And as we did that, it just started slowly. Um, we started slowly seeing the increase. Yeah. And it every year it got better and better, and we started paying our debts off. And we yeah. believe it still is. I mean, yes. we're still living still by faith. Well, we're still truth. doing things that yeah. we don't have the money to pay for, but we know that God supplies all of our needs. Yeah. That's what He said, and He's honest. Yeah. He said, I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And that's what He does, but He does it by our giving. Amen. Amen. And let me re-emphasize, living by faith and giving by faith is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, oh, you, when you make up your mind, yeah. when you receive Jesus, mm -hmm. man, He'll fix everything in your life that you yeah. give Him. Now, if you, re if you keep it for yourself, if you don't trust Him with your money, it won't fix your money. He'll heal your body if you trust Him. Mm -hmm. He'll deliver you from drugs. He did that for me, alcohol, any kind of bad... Um, you know, bad habits you got. He will fill you with His Spirit. He'll anoint you. He'll do amazing things. But I want to remind you that if you were broke the day before you got born again, you're still broke the next day. He said, you cannot serve two masters. And then he didn't even mention the devil. He said, it's me or money. One of these two things is going to master your life. Yes. You're going to spend the rest of your life thinking, if I get more money, I'll have a better life. Or if I understand more of what God said and I get more of Jesus, I'll have a better life. One of those two things will become your master, he said.
you know you had You don't have to play the game It says in Psalm 112, yeah, I think this, so is, this is a super okay. important key to you prospering and having God's best. Yes. Psalm 112 says, praise the Lord, <laughs> blessed, and, and this is the amplified version, I love this, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man who reveres and worships the Lord, Amen. who delights greatly in his commandments. Mm -hmm. His spiritual offspring shall be mighty upon the earth, and the generation of the upright shall be shall blessed. Be blessed. Amen. Then it says this in verse 3, prosperity and welfare are in his house. Yeah. Now don't fuss with me about prosperity if you don't believe God wants you to prosper. This is not something I made up. I'm reading you his words. Yeah. This is not something some preacher came up with to get your money. Mm. If you don't want to cheerfully give, then don't. Yeah. But if you want to be blessed, pay attention to what God's saying because God wants you to have nice things in your house. Mm -hmm. Prosperity and welfare are in that person's house that reverences and worships the Lord and delights greatly in His, his commandments. commandments. That yeah. person's a giver. Mm -hmm. And His righteousness endures forever. Light arises. His righteousness stays intact. Yeah. Him being a wealthy man does not affect his righteousness. That's very important. He doesn't get proud and to think he's smart and talk about how hard he worked. A righteous man is a humble man. And yes. he knows if I have anything, it's because God gave it to me. Mm -hmm. All good things come from above. Verse 4 says, Light arises in the darkness for the upright and gracious, compassionate, and just. Mm -hmm. It says in verse Five, it is well with the man who deals generously and lends. Mm -hmm. It is well with my soul. Amen. Who conducts his affairs with justice. He just does what's right in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. he, if he owes somebody money, he doesn't withhold it. He pays them what he owes them. Mm -hmm. If he tells them he'll do something, he does what he says he'll do. Yeah. Those people can depend on that man. Yes. They feel safe when he's around. And when he gives them or that woman, when they give their word, you can relax and know they are, how did they get that way? They are growing in God and they're growing in love and they're becoming like him because he's totally faithful yeah. at all times, absolutely honest. It is well with the man or woman who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He will not be moved. The righteous or right standing with God shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of these evil tidings. His heart is firmly fixed, trusting and leaning on, and he's confident in the Lord. His heart is established. That person will not be afraid while he waits to see his desire established upon his adversaries. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor and needy. His righteousness, his right standing with God endures forever. And his horn will be exalted in honor. Honor, honor and dignity. Praise yeah. God, man. That's awesome. And the reason why an honor here is because God said, I will honor those who honor me. So when you're given generously, that honors the Lord because you're doing it for him. You're, you give because we love God and we love people. That's our motive for giving. Amen. Acts 20 and verse 35, it says, Be mindful of the words of Jesus. And I think we shared this 
recently in one of our broadcasts, but it says, Be mindful of the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, It is more blessed to be, or, or it makes one happier, happier. Yeah. and more to be envied to give than to receive. Yeah, that's good. You know, the reason why it makes you happier to be givers because when you're looking for ways to be a blessing, which is what Galatians talks about, it says be mindful to be a blessing, um, especially to those of the household of faith, those who are in God's family with you. But it says be mindful to do that. And when you're looking for ways to be a blessing, then you've got your mind off yourself and your situation That's and good, your problems, so it makes you happier. So That's I good. just encourage you to go out and look for ways. Ask the Lord. Every day I wake up and I ask him, Lord, who would you have me be a blessing to today? He'll send people um, when we're out at dinner and we realize that we need to minister to well, the waitress. It's more fun or... to see some sweet elderly mm -hmm. couple Right. and they bow their heads and pray yeah. over their food. Mm -hmm. What's more fun to go to the waitress and pay for their meal? Yeah, so they fun. never know. <laughs> Just tell them Jesus wanted to bless you. Yeah. That's what we do, stuff like that, or a policeman or a fireman or a, a soldier who's been fighting. comes. Mm -hmm. You see some soldiers coming back from Afghanistan. They've been putting their life on the line mm -hmm. so that me and you can go to whatever church we want to, mm -hmm. to buy them a meal. And, to, and tell them Jesus loves them, yeah. oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand ways every day, every day to be, be a blessing. A blessing. Mm -hmm. And you can let them know it's not you, it's Jesus. And God will bless you for that. Well, and I remember one time we were at a restaurant and there was a little elderly woman sitting there that the Lord prompted both of us to take care of her meal. And, and you know, the Word says don't let the your left hand, left hand or your right, right hand's doing. So we are only sharing this with you today um, to give you an example of how you can go about your day being a blessing. And then the Lord prompted us to go over and just love on her. She was sitting all alone and we heard her life story and got it's to pray precious. with her. It was precious. It, it made us so happy. It made our yeah. day. <laughs> so that's those are examples of what we're talking about on being a blessing. We were out in Grand Canyon and we were up on top of this uh, building overlooking the Grand Canyon. And this precious lady, she was a Hopi Indian. Oh, yes. And she was so precious. She let us film from up there. We weren't supposed to be up there. But it was the best view of the Grand Canyon you ever saw. It was awesome. And so I got a chance to sew in her. She was so sweet and she was so kind. But I wanted to tell her about Jesus, and I didn't want to just give her some money. And when I went to her, I was praying for how to go about it. And the Lord told me to witness to her, to just testify, to tell her where God had brought me from. Right. Come to find out her husband was in a rehab program. Wow. I, I let her know when I started my a testimony that I was a heroin addict when God forgave me and saved me. Yeah. Yeah. and how he delivered me. And mm -hmm. she started crying, man. She, she recognized immediately that's her husband. I mean, this was not, this lady's probably 50, I'm guessing 40, 50 years old. And her husband is in a rehab program for heroin addiction. And he had been through them before and it didn't work and he didn't last very long. But I got a chance to pray with her and she's gonna see the power of God released in that man's life. Yes. All I'm saying is your giving opens a door for the ministry of giving. Right. When you give, if you buy somebody so something good. to eat, yes. it's one thing. They need something to eat. Of course we want to help them. Mm -hmm. But while, you're, while they're eating, they're in a better shape. They're thinking clear. Mm -hmm. Their body's in a better shape to receive the Word of you. God for them. Yeah. And that'll help them in the long run, yeah. not just for the next few hours. Yeah, so good. Amen. I want to end with this because we started with this. Luke 6 and verse 38. Give and gifts, it says in the Amplified, will be given to you. Good measure. I, I want to say this again. Give and gifts will be given to you. Not They might be. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to decide, is this about money or is this about faith? Mm -hmm. I want to tell you again, giving is not about finances. It's about do you trust God? If you give generously to the work of the kingdom, yeah. is God going to rip you off or not? Mm. If He's that kind of God, then you shouldn't trust Him. 
But I'm telling you that God is good. And you cannot outgive Him. No. The more you give, the more He will give you. It is impossible to outgive God. Yeah. So, good measure, it says. Give and it'll be given to you. Good measure. That's a lot. Pressed down, shaken together, heaped up, running over, man. Yeah. <laughs> will men give into your bosom or into your life? Mm -hmm. For with the measure you deal out, again, you're in control. Yeah, you decide. With the measure you use when you confer benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. So good. You're in control. If you trust God in your giving, you will give yourself out of poverty mm -hmm. and you will give yourself into prosperity. Yes. That's what God said. That is. And God is honest. God is good. And I'm God telling you, he's got your best in mind. He's got Amen. the best life available to you. And all we're here to do is encourage you to trust yeah. him. Amen. And to stay in the word. And whatever you do until we see you next week, tell your friends to join us and stay on, on the, the road, road to, to freedom. freedom. Well, today you heard us talk about the ministry of giving, and we have a wonderful resource if you'd like to learn more about this subject. It's called, How Blessed Do You Want to Be? And we have it in book format or CD. And I really encourage you to find more out about this subject because how blessed you are is really up to you. God said He's given you the choice. You can choose life or death, the blessing or the curse. So if you want to take advantage of this resource, we have it at mylon.org. Check it out today.